Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and over the last couple of weeks we've been looking at a lot of AMD-based laptops, but now we've got a mini PC to take a look at. This is the Minus Forum Desk Mini, and this is coming out soon. And this is powered by an AMD Ryzen 5 3550H processor. And although it looks and feels a lot like some of those low-cost Intel devices we look at all the time here, this one is a lot more powerful, and we're going to be putting it through its paces here in just a second. But I do want to let you know, in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from Minus Forum. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this little mini PC is all about. Now, at the time I'm recording this video, the mini PC is being sold through their Indiegogo page for $399. Uh, they said that is an introductory price and it will likely go up to about $430 to $450 when it hits retailers. My advice always is to wait until it is a regular shipping product just so you have some recourse on the customer service side with the retailer. But if you can't wait, it is available at a slightly lower price than what the retail version will sell for. So let's take a look now at the hardware. Uh, this configuration has an AMD Ryzen 5 3550H. Uh, that is a quad core processor with eight threads and it is running at the 35 watt TDP. So it should perform a little better than some of the laptops we looked at uh, with this generation of Ryzen technology last year. Uh, but this is not the new version of the Ryzen processor that we just got through looking at on the laptop side. But still, you'll see it performs pretty nicely nonetheless. Now the entry level version they sent us was configured with eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. It is super easy to upgrade it. All you have to do is push down on the top of the lid here and that will get you right in. You can just pop it right out here and start working on your RAM and storage. I was very disappointed though to see that when it arrived, it only had a single memory module installed. So it did have eight gigs, but it was on one module. And that means you're not going to get the best performance because these AMD processors like dual channel RAM. And the only way to get there is to get two modules installed on the machine. So that's what we did uh, after it arrived. They've got a pair of DDR4 2400 sticks in this thing. Uh, these are four gigs each for a total of eight, but we're going to get better performance because we're running in dual channel mode. And so all of the benchmarks and games you're about to see were all done with these two sticks installed and not the single stick that it came with. I was also disappointed to see that it doesn't support NVMe storage, just M2 SATA. And that's what is on the top here. It's got an M2 SATA drive that you can still easily upgrade, but doesn't have the performance that some of the faster NVMe's do. Now, if you want to add a second drive, you can. You can uh, just connect this SATA connector to a two and a half inch laptop hard drive. You can install a spinning drive or an SSD and you can secure it on the top of the case here. So you install the drive here and just plug that cable in and put it back together again and you're good to go. Now there's a lot of ports on this one and on the front of it here, you've got a microphone right on the case. That's pretty cool. Uh, you've got a USB-C port that does display and data. It doesn't do power delivery, but it will output 4K 60 Hertz through that port with the right dongle. So that was cool to see. Uh, you've got two USB 3.0 ports next to it. Headphone jack here right on the front and your power switch and BIOS reset button. On the back, you've got more ports to look at. Uh, two USB 3.0 ports. You've got two more display outputs here, HDMI and DisplayPort, so you can drive three 4K 60 Hertz displays simultaneously. Works great, we tested that a little bit earlier, so that was exciting to see on here. And you've got two gigabit ethernet jacks. They're one gigabit each, but you can do all sorts of stuff when you've got two built-in uh, ethernet ports on there, so that was cool. Uh, then you've got your power adapter here. You've got some of your cooling over here and a Kensington lock as well, so it won't walk away. Uh, the fan is a bit noisy on this one. It's kind of like what you typically hear out of a small gaming laptop, so it's going to be a little on the noisy side, uh, but it does, as you'll see in a few minutes, keep itself pretty cool. So overall, a nice selection of ports, a pretty nice piece of hardware here, minus the single channel configuration it came in. Uh, let's get this thing powered up now, though, and see how it performs. So let's start off with some web browsing. We'll load up Google Chrome here and maybe visit the nasa.gov homepage. 
It's at 4K right now at 60 hertz, and we are using some display scaling so that we can actually read the text. And as you can see here, it is super fast. There's really no issues with the uh, web browsing on this one. So I think all of the basics here will be uh, quite snappy. Now I am connected right now via ethernet, uh, but if you were on Wi-Fi, you should see similar performance. And it does have a Wi-Fi 6 radio built in as well. Uh, so altogether, really no problems here uh, browsing around the web and doing some of the basics there. Uh, let's take a look now and see how it does with YouTube at 4K. So here is YouTube running at 4K 60 hertz, and we did see a couple of drop frames here or there, nothing significant, and a lot of times those drop frames were the result of the on-screen controls coming up and disappearing or an ad coming on screen but occasionally we would see a drop frame just in the video playback as well. So just keep that in mind. Not super perfect 4K 60 playback, but close enough and not very noticeable. I have really stopped using PCs in a home theater environment now. I use my Nvidia Shield exclusively, but I think if you are looking to plug this into a TV to watch some movies on Netflix or something, uh, it should do just fine. And again, just a couple of drop frames at 60 running with Google Chrome, but really nothing significant. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 136 on version 1.0 of that test and 77.65 on version 2.0. As you can see here, it's a little slower than the new 4500U Ryzen that was on the Lenovo Flex 5 we reviewed about two weeks ago. That's to be expected, but it is a lot quicker versus some of the Intel Gemini Lake chips that we typically see on mini PCs like this one. So altogether, very good performance for web browsing and doing the basics out of this Ryzen chip, but where it's really going to shine is in gaming, and we were very impressed with the gaming results on this one. Let's have a look. So let's start off with Fortnite, and if you run everything at 1080p at the lowest settings, you can get between 80 and 140 frames per second. Very good output there. Of course, turning the settings up will reduce the frame rate, and we got between 30 and 60 frames per second when we switched to the medium settings. On Rocket League, similar story here, 1080p highest settings, 30 to 40 frames per second. But then when we went down to the lowest settings at 1080p, we were at a very smooth 80 to 100 frames per second. GTA 5 ran best at 720p lowest settings between 60 and 80 frames per second. But if you did want to run at 1080p, you can expect between 45 and 60, again, at the lowest settings. Uh, we also ran the 2016 version of Doom. That one ran best at 720p, low settings with Vulkan enabled. Uh, we were getting about 40 to 60 frames per second there. 1080p was running about 30 to 40 frames per second, again, at the lowest settings on Vulkan. And then Witcher 3, we ran 720p low settings and got between 35 and 50 frames per second. So we're seeing some really good gaming performance out of this, very close to what we saw out of the new generation Ryzen laptops we've looked at over the last couple of weeks. And we're getting that performance because this one is not constrained uh, by being inside of a laptop. It's running from wall power. Uh, we've got a 35 watt TDP on this thing. And as a result, uh, the performance here is really, really good, even though it's not the current generation Ryzen technology. And I would love to see what the current generation would do inside of this box. We'll have to wait and see for that. Uh, and here is Wave Race running on the Dolphin emulator. Uh, it's running great, full speed here, no issues. You might see a couple of frame drops here or there on your display because we're going from 60 to 30 inside of my video system here. But overall, it's been a great gaming experience for a mini PC. And it's really fun to see a mini PC with one of these Ryzen processors running completely unrestrained. Let's take a look now at some benchmarks we ran to see how it compares to other computers we've looked at. So let's begin with the 3D Mark CloudGate test. There we got a score of 14,730, and it's pretty much in the same ballpark as those laptops running with the newer generation processors. Again, because we don't have some of those power constraints, really good stuff there. Uh, it's also besting an Intel 10th generation i5 chip as well. You can see how it is stacking up against that uh, found inside the Acer Swift 3. And then on the 3D Mark Time Spy test, we got a score of 1022. Again, very close to those current generation Ryzen chips and also very close to what we saw out of an Acer laptop with an MX150 GPU. And on the 3D Mark stress test, which measures its thermal performance, we got a passing grade of 97%. 
You can also see the temperatures that the AMD CPU was running at during that test, which puts it under constant load for a period of time. And that tells me that we're not going to see all that much thermal throttling here. It should be pretty consistent when the system is under load. I should note, however, that the passing mark on that test is 97%. So it kind of squeaked by on that one. But still, you shouldn't see all that much variation in performance, even when the system is under load. All right, one last thing to check out here, and that is its Linux support. We booted up Ubuntu 20.04. Video is working properly. In fact, it's running at 4K right now, and I scaled the display up to 200%. All good. Wi-Fi is working. Audio is working. Bluetooth is working. Ethernet works. The USB ports are working as well here. So altogether, I think this is going to be a decent little Linux machine in addition to running Windows, too. So I am very impressed here. Great performance out of this little computer, and I would love to see what the current generation AMD Ryzen chips would do in this form factor. I think we're going to start seeing some really fast little mini PCs on the horizon that have great graphical performance and just really good general computing performance as well. And let's hope we see more things like this one in the near future because we haven't seen too many AMD powered mini PCs here on the channel and I'm eager to play with more. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the LON.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, David Hockman, Brian Parker, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.